Hey guys, Jan here in the Northview Model Shop. I want to show you a little something I worked on a while ago. Um, I really wasn't in the mood to do a full-on build, but uh, I was reading through a magazine and uh, this technique kind of struck me. And I figured, hell, you know what, I'm going to try this on a scrap body. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It seemed to work pretty good. I think I'm going to uh, implement this at some point in the build. Uh, as you see, it is obviously the hairspray technique. Um, I took this whole body and uh, what we did first and foremost was coming from the back side, I don't think you see it, is uh, you know you start grinding away where you want your rust holes to go. Now I feel I overdid it but you know like I said this was an experiment. But uh, what you do is you come in with uh, what I use as a variance of tools in the in the motor tool, right? The, the machining or the uh, milling bit, the large ball grinder and then the, the very micro uh, ball grinder. Uh, working at you know medium speed and you uh, you just kind of start thinning out the, uh, the material on the back side. You get, you know, it's almost transparent. Your plastic should almost see through it. Uh, and then what I did, well, I guess one tool I didn't get out here, oh, right there, is your cheap X-Acto. You just start kind of working the area you want your holes to show through. And then when you're all done, we get this, eh, eh, whatever. You can see the holes in the rusting. Um, so that's where I got with uh, that's how I got that part of it out. It didn't work really well. Like I said, I kind of overdid it a little bit. Um, some of the holes in the door probably too much. Oh, the fenders aren't so bad, right? Rear quarters are kind of nice, but anywho, man, both sides. And then I also experimented with uh, with uh, cutting and opening and hinging. Unfortunately, I didn't bend my hinge right, so that's as far as the trunk opens up. But it opens a lot this way. Woo wee wee woo ah. Uh, Damn, I broke it. Ah, there we go. Anyway, experiment. Uh, I understand now that these hinges need to be bent in a kind of an S or Z kind of fashion to get what you want to do. Not important. That's not what we were talking about today. Anyway, um, so I got to this point. Uh, everything was cut. Uh, then I went with my, my primer of choice. Uh, I think I went with, well, obviously, see here, I went with the uh, the black primer. Um Probably not the best choice. Probably should have gone with like a gray or something, just to kind of give more of the metal look. But oh, I'll get to that later. Um, got her primed down, and then I went over it with a what color did I use? I believe it was Tamian Hall Red or something like that. One of my uh, rusting colors, anyway. Sprayed that over nice and nice and fine. And then here's another boo boo I made. I went with a enamel testers uh, light blue. It's an awesome color for this era. Problem is, it doesn't pan out the way you want it to when it comes to the uh, hairspraying technique. Because as I just far got, uh, before I laid down the blue, I laid down a couple coats of this nice, lovely smelling hairspray. Made this model smell real good. I mean, I know raw styrene smells good, but man, when the car smells like your wife's hair, oh yeah, giggity, giggity. Well, anywho, um... Once you get your hairspray, and then you lay down the next color, you let it dry for a little bit, then what the, uh, like I said, uh, I used the enamel, which was the big boo-boo. You should have used the, um, used the acrylic. This would have gone a lot easier. But anyway, after everything's dried up, with a nice stiff brush, I just took a, uh, a half-inch brush, cut the bristles real short, it came real stiff, and then uh, with some water, you get in there and you really work it in, right? And the water... In the with acrylics will kind of seep through, get to the uh, the hairspray, and uh, that'll uh, loosen it up, and that gives you this chipping effect. So, as I moved on and got further on the project, the enamels cured even more and more, and eventually I had to resort to sanding, kind of giving the buff and the sand and stuff, and that got everything loosened up. Um, this area here, the paint was really thick, uh, and also with the roof, so I had to really buff it up with that uh, that 220 um, emery cloth. Uh, and what happened here was it actually really, really scratched and weathered the paint up really nice. It was actually a good mistake. Um, in hindsight, I uh, should have used acrylics all the way through. Uh, the military guys who use this technique often, you know, point that out. Uh, after I read Cranky's book, uh, I realized yeah, that was a no-brainer too if I would have read before I did. But, you know, the, the experiment was fun. I had a great time doing this. So, uh, anyway, guys, that's. That's my little technique on this. Uh, I'm going to experiment some more and maybe come to you in the future again with some uh, revised uh, ideas here. But uh, hope you like what I got. All right. Take it easy.